Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Janet Kelsey of Separation Science and I'd like to welcome you all to our latest webinar in collaboration with Thermo Fisher Scientific. Our topic today is a new integrated sample to result analytical workflow for the sensitive and reliable analysis of polar and ionic pesticides and metabolites. However, before we begin, let me cover some administrative details. If you look toward the bottom of your screen, you'll see a black ask a question button and you can ask questions at any point during the presentation by clicking the button and typing them into the pop up window and clicking the OK button. Questions will be answered at the end of the formal presentation and any questions that we don't cover may be answered offline by the presenters afterwards. Please note that submitted questions are not seen by the other attendees, so don't be shy about asking them. If at any time during the webinar you require technical assistance, you can submit a question under the player window and type in your comments. The technical team will then respond to you directly. This presentation will be recorded and you will all be sent a link to the recording by email when it is ready. With that out of the way, let me introduce our presenters for today's webinar. Richard Fussell is a Vertical Marketing Manager for the Food and Beverage Market in the Chromatography and Mass Spectrometry Division at Thermo Fisher Scientific. He has more than 40 years of experience working in food safety analysis. Before joining Thermo Fisher Scientific, he worked as a Senior Scientist and Advanced Research Fellow at the Food and Environment Research Agency in the UK where he was responsible for the management and delivery of research and collaboration projects. Fausto Pigosso is the Director of Workflow Development, Food and Beverage in the Chromatography and Mass Spectrometry Division at Thermo Fisher Scientific. With over 25 years experience in analytical chemistry and mass spectrometers, Fausto has contributed to the development of all GC and GCMS and ancillary devices offered today by Thermo Fisher Scientific. His analytical expertise in technology and applications is used for helping customers find solutions to their needs and challenges. And so, without further ado, I'll turn the presentation firstly over to Fausto. Fausto. Thank you for the introduction. We want to take uh, uh, this opportunity to discuss the development, uh, the capability and the benefits uh, of the new product, uh, Thermo Scientific Anionic Pesticide Explorer. This is a new sample to result analytical workflow composed of four modules. Um, an extraction modules, as you can see on the slide, based on the European Reference Lab uh, Quick Polar Pesticide Extraction Method uh, with solid phase extraction cleanup, uh, followed by a high performance uh, ion chromatography separation, which is the second module, a triple quadruple mass spectrometer detection module, and a chromidium chromatography uh, data system modules. The modules are fully integrated and validate to provide robust, sensitive, and reliable and multi analyte determination of polar and ionic pesticides and metabolites at low concentration levels in a wide variety of sample types, as you will see later on in the presentations. This workflow is available as an off the shelf kit, which includes all instruments, software, necessary consumables. We include also a suitability check standard solutions, metal details, and detailed deployment guide for fast implementation immediately after the installation of the system. You will see in the presentation that the workflow provides results which are in compliance with the European, uh, uh, European maximum uh, residual level regulation and European SANTE method validation guidelines, uh, and is also highly productive and robust uh, in routine analysis. So during the presentations, uh, we will focus on uh, 
background and analytical challenge for the analysis of polar and ionic pesticides. We will look at the existing analytical and target reporting limits for polar and ionic pesticides. We will review the features of each individual component of the analytical workflow, and we will discuss the optimization and benefits of the fully integrated ICM SMS systems with the electrolytic suppression of the eluent. We will then discuss the design and results of a validation experiments using wheat, leak, and baby food matrices. And this will include presentation of the results based on different calibration approach. And finally, we will give a short summary. Well, anionic pesticides are widely used in agricultural production residues and are often detected in food. For example, glyphosate is commonly detected in breakfast cereals in beer and more recently in honey. Ethethon has been detected in grapes and pineapples, while, for instance, chlorate has been detected in fruits, dairy products, and baby food. So clearly, there is a need to improve methods for monitoring, but uh, anionic polar pesticides provide a number of analytical challenges. As you can see on slide, uh, there are uh, small water soluble molecules uh, with poor chromatography retentions uh, using reverse phase uh, chromatography, so are usually not included in conventional multi analyzed uh, LCMS methods. Consequently, monitoring uh, of residuals of anionic pesticides in food is inadequate, allowing the potential for misuse to go undetected. European Food Safety Agency and European Commission has therefore requested the development of improved, more cost-effective methods to enable laboratory to generate more data and provide better controls. Among all challenges, uh, European Food Safety Agencies have also indicated that residual definition of glyphosate analysis uh, for risk assessment studies should be the sum of glyphosate and their relevant metabolites, and normal acetyl glyphosate, AMPA, and normal acetyl AMPA, which would make the analysis even more challenging. Another issue is shown in uh, these slides uh, is the variation in the current uh, maximum residual levels uh, for the different commodity, uh, most of which are set uh, at the limit of determination, as shown in the table covering the three different matrices uh, used for validation in this study with leak and baby food. In most of the cases, uh, laboratory, however, use a target reporting limit of uh, uh, 0 0.01 uh, milligram per kilogram, so 10 ppb, even in cases where maximum residual levels are higher, as in the case of glyphosate. Uh, in wheat. In addition, each stage of the analysis provides an analytical challenge. Simple extractions is performed with a modified version of the quick polar pesticide method. However, the method brings a high level of matrix co-extracted, and usually uh, isotope label internal standard are used to correct for extraction efficiency. Very simple cleanup is performed to remove co-extracted. This is, however, very specific to the commodity and analyzed to, uh, to be removed. The lack of a generic cleanup uh, makes the only strategy to be generally applied to all commodities just the dilution. It is also difficult to achieve uh, sensitive reproducible results using liquid chromatography with derivatization or through direct analysis using image or no suppressed ion chromatography. The polarity of this analysis does not allow direct analysis by reverse phase HPLC. Some image separation can suffer from metal contaminants that leach from using conventional metal-based ultra high performance liquid chromatography systems. Some vendors, for instance, recommend flashing of the system with the ADTA to minimize the interaction between analyte and metals. Ion chromatography 
with no electrolytic su suppression is not robust enough as detector cannot stand longer to the high ionic strength of the mobile phase. And this leaves as only options uh, ion chromatograph with electrolytic uh, suppression. Finally, triple quadruple is used as detector for targeted analysis or in case of uh, targeted or an untargeted analysis, uh, use of high resolution accurate mass uh, is an option. The final challenge uh, is that all results must meet the European SAMT performance criteria. Let's have a look at the um, ion exchange as ion chromatography and the basis uh, of the uh, anionic pesticide explorer. Uh, the left side of these diagrams uh, represent the mechanism of separation achieved with an ion exchange on the stationary phase uh, uh, particles. Usually the competitive uh, polarity between uh, target analyte and mobile phase toward the active site on the stationary phase generates the delay of target analyze and the chromatography separation. In ion chromatography, the typical eluent or mobile phase is potassium hydroxide, just increasing uh, the eluent concentrations uh, and is possible to uh, push the analyte ions uh, and uh, get the uh, separation completed. Of course, uh, potassium hydroxide is not compatible with mass spectrometer detector, but using a suppression technology, a big innovation from Dianox, it is possible to convert highly caustic mobile phase to pool water and the potassium salt of the analyte to the acid of the analyte. In this way, we are able to connect the IC to the mass spectrometer without worrying about the high concentration of salts. Additional, uh, this enables the use of high capacity IC columns that enable higher sensitivity, higher capacity versus food co-extractive interference and excellent selectivity. The other advantages of the Dianex uh, ion chromatography systems are related to the inertness of the systems achieved uh, using uh, uh, peak and no metals along all analyte pathway. The metal-free IC systems eliminates the issue of chelation of polar analytes by metal science leaching from the LC systems, while the reagent-free electrolytic eluent generation removes the tedious preparation of the mobile phase. Another advantage of generating gradients in situ using the eluent generator cartridge is that the gradients are extremely reproducible so that retention times are really stable. And we spoke already about the advantages uh, of using uh, electrolytic regeneration suppressor uh, for the connections to the mass spectrometer. The triple quadruple used in all these experiments was the TSQ Altis. Uh, of course, there is a lot of new technology in this triple quadruple, and you can see some highlights on the schematic uh, on the right hand side of the slide. Innovation in the ion source, mass analyzer. Uh, RF electronics offer high sensitivity, reduced noise, and more data points with high SRM uh, rates. You can confidently quantify compounds at extremely low concentration in the most challenging matrices, like, for instance, food matrices. The systems offer very high sensitivity in neg negative mode that is cru crucial to reach low level of concentration for anionic pesticides. All technical enhancements, uh, such as novel ion optics, able to reduce chemical background by ion beamer blocking and source design, increase robustness, reduce maintenance, and improve reproducibility. Promillion software was used to acquire, process, and report data. Among all key features, it provides the ultimate confidence of the highest data integrity and compliance-ready data processing. Compliance tools are available in the result panel and dynamically updated during the data acquisition for easy and immediate checking of results, so saving time. The screen on the right hand side shows, for instance, for selected analyte, in this case, perchlorate, quantitation and confirmation ions, 
linearity and higher ratio deviation using a color-coded flag to visually highlight compliance, non-compliance throughout the sequence. So if we are looking at the full system configuration, it includes a Dialex Integrion, high-performance IC system fitted with an electrolytic eluent generator and conductivity cell, coupled with an auto sampler and TSQ quantities, triple quadruple mass spectrometer. Separation is achieved using a high on pack, um, 19 uh, 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 GAR columns and analytical columns um, with elution of polar anionic analyte using potassium hydroxide gradient. A, an ionic dy dynamically regenerate, regenerated suppressor installed after the columns convert uh, uh, potassium hydroxide to water before eluent flow enter it conductivity detector and mass spectrometer, which are connected in series. There is uh, an auxiliary pump uh, adding uh, acetonitrile modifier uh, to, let's say, um, improve uh, uh, the um, uh, dissolvations uh, um, uh, into the MS source uh, and typically increasing response for most of the analyzed by three or four times. And as mentioned, the system control data acquisition data processing is done using the chromelian uh, chromatography data systems. The method has been developed with representative commodities, wheat flour as an example of dry commodity, leak for high pigment content, a baby food, a fruit based, as an example of a challenging matrices. All validation has been done using European Sante regulatory guidelines. The method consolidated the determination of uh, polar anionic pesticides into single analysis, increasing, of course, productivity and reducing cost. The workflow, as mentioned, is provided with a system suitability check standards to assess performance during installation. The software includes a preloaded acquisition method, data processing, and reporting templates. For instance, uh, if we talk about uh, uh, triple quote MS, all SRM transitions are optimized and preloaded into the software with the relative collision as energy and uh, other MS parameters. The system also includes a detailed operating manual. We call it uh, deployment guide for fast implementation and enablement of ongoing optimum performance. The development of the method started with the optimization of the MS parameters and started in identifying the optimum condition of the electrospray ion source. All parameters were optimized for each individual analyte. We evaluated signal stability, robustness of the system, and maximum response. And the final setting uh, are a compromise between maximum response and signal stability. The next optimization involved uh, optimizing all SRM transition, infusing a spike standard into the system and generating multiple transitions for quantify and qualify ions uh, for each pesticide, and then selecting uh, those ions that provide the optimum peak free from interferences or high background level. All those uh, SRM with relevant MS parameters are saved in the compound database preloaded into the software. And with that, I handed over to my colleagues, Richard Fassel, to uh, show you all the results of this validation. Please, Richard. Yes, uh, thank you, Fasto, for your uh, comprehensive description of the workflow components. So as you said, let's move on to the validation experiments and the results. So we started the development of an extraction method using wheat flour uh, because it is a dry commodity with a high concentration of matrix co-extractives. We hoped that if the method was successful for wheat, uh, the same method would be applicable to other matrices. The extraction method is a modification of the CUPE or Quick Polar Pesticides Extraction Method developed by the European Reference Laboratory for Single Residue methods. So firstly, 5 grams of wheat sample is rehydrated with 10 mils of deionized water. 
The aqueous slurry is extracted with methanol and then the mixture is cooled at minus 20 for 15 minutes prior to centrifugation. The supernatant is then diluted tenfold with water before solid phase extraction cleanup and filtration using an on guard reverse phase cartridge connected to a 0.2 micron filter. The on guard SPE removes the fine precipitate that is formed in highly aqueous extracts of wheat and also makes it easier to filter the extract. The filtrate is collected in polypropylene vials ready for injection, which is in this case 25 uh, microliter. For the calculation of recovery or for preparation of procedural standard calibrations, the native compounds uh, and or isotopically labeled internal standards, if available, uh, were spiked uh, onto the sample before extraction. But for the preparation of matrix match calibration standards, the analytes were spiked after the cleanup as shown in the schematic. The total iron chromatogram of a standard in the top right section of this slide shows the chromatographic separation of the analytes and also highlights the difference in the mass spectrometry response of the different pesticides which are all at the same concentration. The insets show the extracted iron chromatograms for the quantification and qualifier ions for each individual compound at 0.01 milligram per kilogram or 10 ppb in wheat flour. Just note the uh, excellent response and peak shape for N-acetyl glyphosate, a compound which is difficult by helix separations and subsequently sometimes missing from literature publications. Uh, this slide shows the same information for the other compounds included in the same chromatographic run. We also need to mention the fact that the retention times are extremely stable. In calibration plots, the response for 12 compounds are all linear over the range equivalent of 4 to 200 nanograms per gram with satisfactory R-squared values. The experiments in this presentation were carried out at our customer solution center in Beijing, China, where they were not able to import the isotopically labeled internal standards for all of the anionic pesticides uh, of interest. Therefore, different calibration approaches were evaluated in an attempt to compensate for recovery losses. And this table shows the results obtained. So using matrix match standards, uh, IEE, that is uh, prepared after extraction and cleanup with no internal standards, then AMPA, N-acetyl glyphosate, and glyphosate produced relatively low absolute recoveries as highlighted uh, with the uh, purple. And this is possibly because of binding of these particular analytes to the matrix. Having said that, the results could be considered sufficiently reproducible for the purposes of screening analyses. Now, spiking the samples with labeled standards before extraction and then using matrix matched calibration with labeled standards, the results are corrected very nicely as shown in the columns highlighted in the pale amber, amber color, but of course only for the compounds um, for which we have the internal standards available. And then finally, using procedural standards, uh, which is a calibration series prepared by spiking before extraction, apparent recoveries are corrected for losses as highlighted in the pale green. Now this apparently worked uh, very well but a word of caution that this is only validation using a single sample matrix. When we evaluated a number of different samples rather than just one individual sample, the results were more variable. Even if we use the same sample for exact matrix uh, match spiking and calibration, as was the case in this table, and this means that results for sample one is based on uh, spiking and calibration using the same sample, number one. The result for sample two is based on the spiking and calibration using the same sample, number two, and so on, which is the best scenario. 
And then other experiments also confirmed that the variation between samples uh, is too high to allow the use of matrix match calibration or procedural standards prepared from one sample to accurately calculate incurred residues in different samples. So therefore, in the analyses of wheat, the use of labeled uh, standards or standard addition seems to be the only way to ensure accurate measurement of incurred residues extracted. Of course, this does not take into account any issues with the actual extraction efficiency. Another issue encountered in our experiments was the fact that residu the residues of uh, glyphosate and phosphonic acid appeared in the samples purchased, which further emphasizes the need for increased monitoring. This slide simply shows the quantification and identification of chlorate at the EU maximum residue level. The results for chlorate and all other uh, compounds except those uh, with high values in the blanks are fully compliant with the uh, latest SANTE guideline criteria for method validation. Another important consideration in routine analyses is robustness. Here, this shows that after 80 consecutive injections of wheat flour extracts, the iron source remained clean, and the peak shapes, retention times, and detector responses remained very stable. Leak a vegetable crop, proved to be a much easier matrix compared to uh, wheat and gave good data irrespective of the calibration approach. Using procedural calibration standards, all recoveries were in the range 70 to 120% and all RSDs were below 10%. By contrast, baby foods purchased in China proved to be a very challenging matrix. So much so, we needed to modify the SPE cleanup step and inject 50 microliters instead of 25 microliters. We also used Hypercept PGC instead of OnGuard reverse phase SPE. And the reason was that Hypercept eliminated the increase in system pressure that occurred on injection of non-cleaned up or OnGuard cleaned up extracts of baby foods. It has been suggested that this could be due to thickening agents um, used during the manufacture of baby foods. Also on this slide, you can see the elution profile of AMPA glyphosate and n glyphosate from the Hypercept cartridge, which has proved to be very effective with minimal losses of analytes. This table shows the results using the conventional approach to validation testing a single sample matrix at three different concentrations. All of the results are in compliance with the Sante criteria, except chlorate and perchlorate at 2.5 nanogram per gram and phosphonic acid at 10 nanogram per gram, and only because of residues in the blank. Now this slide shows the results for anionic pesticide spiked at five nanogram per gram in nine different baby foods using the Hypercept cleanup method, but with no uh, labeled standards. The calibration was using exact mass uh, matrix matched uh, standards, indicating minimal losses of analytes uh, during the cleanup. And most importantly, the SPE cleanup increases workflow robustness and minimizes system downtime. During method development, the Dynex IC uh, guard and analytical column set has been used for 1,500 injections, including more than 1,200 injections of baby food, while the ADRS suppressor has been subjected to over 700 injections of baby food and wheat flour extracts cleaned up by SPE. The next three slides show the extracted iron chromatograms for anionic pesticides at low concentrations in a baby food matrix. Firstly, glyphosate and metabolites. Uh, this shows the um, extracted iron uh, chromatograms at five uh, nanogram per gram and also the LOQ uh, limit of quantification at 2.5 nanogram per gram. 
and um, now glufosinates and metabolites and for the um, other analytes as well. The iron ratios were within the expected range um, compared to the standards for all of the analytes shown on all three slides. And here we have an example of an incurred uh, residues detected in, uh, in baby foods for chlorate in the blank sample at 0.7 ppb and phosphonic acid at 20.3 ppb, so a much higher concentration. And another example um, of a baby food which contained perchlorate, phosphonic acid, and chlorates, all in the same sample. So we have provided a lot of, of information. So what does it all mean now and into the future? We believe that we can meet the current EU maximum residue levels and residue definitions, as well as the Sante method validation criteria for all matrix analyte combinations tested. Furthermore, we are much closer to be able to meet the EU residue definition for glyphosate should the residue definition change in the future. The iron chromatography mass spectrometry approach is also being used successfully in commercial laboratories. For example, now Foods presented a poster at AOAC 2018 which documented the analysis of glyphosate, AMPA, glufosinate and MPPA in botanical samples such as maca, silymarin and cat's claw. Limits of quantification were well below 10 nanogram per gram and the system is performing well after almost one year. Now Foods compared Hillock with IC and found that the iron chromatography provided lower detection limits, which was an important factor for monitoring their raw ingredients. So in summary, the IC MSMS anionic pesticides analytical workflow can provide compliance with current EU, R EU MRL residue definitions levels and EU SANTE guidelines for method validation and ongoing quality control, as demonstrated for leak, wheat, and baby food matrices. It can also provide higher productivity by aggregation of two to three methods into a single analysis and long-term robustness proven by analyses of a large number of samples of complex matrices such as wheat and baby food. And just a reminder that the new Thermo Fisher Scientific Anionic Pesticide Explorer is available as an off-the-shelf analytical workflow including preloaded acquisition and data processing methods and system suitability check standard solution. Uh, all of the instrument and software parameters have been optimized and documented to assist the installer with fast implementation and for the operator to routinely uh, maintain high system performance and especially sensitivity. Also, the standardized configuration will enable Thermo Fisher a scientific field specialist to provide improved customer support. Uh, Fausto and myself would like to take this opportunity to acknowledge our colleagues at the Beijing Customer Solution Center for their support in this project, especially Shilei Guo and Ying Chen Li. And finally, Thank you for taking your valuable time to join us today. We invite you to stay connected with us, and if you want more information on this topic and are interested in other analytical workflows and resources, then please take a look at our Food and Beverage Analyses website. I will now hand you, hand you back uh, for questions. Thank you.